a public officer is whoever that has been uh, established and working within a public organ. And uh, the public organ, as it were, draws funds from the public sector. So all those that draw uh, funds from the consolidated fund within the public ex exchequer is a public um, officer. And uh, definitely the teachers draw salaries from the very same fund, so they are public officers. The same to government uh, doctors? Same to government doctors. And all the officers that work within the public sector are all drawn within the public sector. And uh, how are you going to handle this issue every time we have uh, strikes? And the uh, strike looks uh, like it's like the way for the teachers to get remunerated and the doctors. What, what, what are you doing about that? Uh, we find this a very, very unfortunate situation. Unfortunate indeed because we have established systems. The constitution and other legal frameworks within the country has established the way of negotiation. The collective bargaining agreement is well outlined, uh, outlining the processes within which uh, an institution should follow in determining the wages for, um, for all public officers. And um, as a way of advice, because you notice that um, the Salaries and Remuneration Commission has two mandates. For this particular group, our responsibility is to advise. Why are we advising? The advice here is coming in because of some certain principles that this country is quite alive to. One being ensuring that the total wage bill is fiscally sustainable. That is the reason the attachment of the advice comes in to the Salaries and Remuneration Commission. The other factor is to ensure that the public sector is able to attract and retain skilled workforce to undertake the functions of the public office. Another one is to ensure that there is the aspect of performance and productivity, something that perhaps has not been considered over the years. Yet we have to ensure that we produce what we eat instead of consuming what we have not produced. Salaries is supposed to ensure that is fully complied to. And then finally, the issue of transparency and fairness. We bring in fairness and highlight it very, very seriously for reason that most of the determination of the salaries and remuneration within this country have not been based on any systems that ensures um, parity and equity. So the issue of fairness comes in and transparency because if you determine the salaries in a transparent manner, then it is possible for all the public officers to know what they are drawing in relation to the rest of the public officers. And therefore, the, the, the role of salaries and man, uh, remuneration uh, comes in uh, very, very critically. Part of what we uh, undertook to do is to establish a guideline, a guideline that gives us an interface between us and our stakeholders. That guideline was given way back on, uh, in July. That was to um, stipulate the, the factors they have co to consider in setting and in determining the wages for the public sector. That was also given to the Teacher Service Commission and even to all the unions. So they are aware, they are privy to the factors that ought to be considered, which as Salaries and commun uh, Remuneration Commission feel have not been complied to. The current strike, if it is ongoing as we are talking now, Truly, we feel is a short change of the systems that have already been established because they ought to go through the guidelines that we have provided so that by the time they are talking about the demand, talk about 300%. As of now, we don't know whether the teacher's uh, position is worth 300% of the baseline now or not. And we told them, follow this specific guideline so that at the end of it all, the demand you are giving will be based on certain objective criteria. And that also ensures that there is parity across, so that the teachers will have a relationship with other positions that have been established within the public sector and remove the kind of disparities that are existing now within that system.